Hello. Today we are talking about P. V. Shelley and his poem O to the West Wind. P. B. Shelley was one of the major English romantic poets widely regarded as one of the finest lyric and philosophical poet in English language. Shelley was deeply influenced by the poetry of Wordsworth. The life of P. B. Shelley and his work <coughs> exemplify English Romanticism in both it, uh, its uh, extremes of joyous ecstasy and brooding despair, Romanticism and major themes, restlessness and brooding rebellion against authority. Interchanged with nature, the power of the visionary imagination and of poetry, the pursuit of ideal love and uh, untamed spirit even in search of freedom. All these Shelley exemplify in the way he lived his life. P.B. Shelley was widely regarded as one of the finest lyrics and philosophical poets in English language. O to the West Wind is a poem written by P. B. Shelley, who written it at a single sitting. I repeat, at a single sitting on October twenty fifth, eighteen nineteen. It was published in eighteen twenty. Considered a prime example of the poet's passionate language and symbolic imagery, the ode invokes the spirit of the west wind as destroyer and preserver, the sparks of creative vitality. Now we analyze the whole poem in one time. A first-person persona addresses the west wind in five, five stanzas. It is strong and fearsome. In the first stanza, the wind blows the leaves of autumn. In the second stanza, the wind blows the clouds in the sky. In the third stanza, the wind blows across an island and the waves of the sea. In the fourth stanza, the persona imagines being a leaf, a cloud or a wave sharing the uh, wind's strength. He desires to be lifted up rather than caught low on the thorn of life, for the season himself as like the wind, tameless and swift and proud. In the final stanza, he asks the wind to play upon him like a lyre. He wants to share the wind's uh, fire uh, spirit. Uh, in turn, he would have the p power to spread his verse throughout the world, reawakening it. The poet is directing his speech to the wind and all that it has the power to do as it uh, takes ch charge of the rest of uh, nature and blows across the earth and through the seasons able both to preserve and to destroy all in its path. The wind takes control uh, over clouds, seas, weather and more. The poet offers the wind over the Mediterranean Sea was an inspiration. Recognizing its power, the wind become a metaphor for nature's awe-inspiring spirit. By the final stanza, the speaker has come to term with the wind's power over him, keeping in the mind that this is an ode. The tone of the speaker understandably includes ex uh, excitement, pleasure, hope and joy. Shelley draws a parallel between the season, seasonal cycles of the wind and that of his even-changing, ever-changing spirit. According to Abraham's, here nature in the form of wind is presented as the outer correspondent 
to an inner change from apathy to spiritual vitality and from imaginative sterility uh, to a burst of creative power. Shelley focuses his praise around the wind's role in the various cycles in nature, death, regeneration, death and regeneration, preservation and destruction. The first two stanzas are mere praise for the wind's power, covered in simile and allusion to all that which is wind has the power to do. Loosen, spread, shed, and burst. In the fourth stanza uh, and in the fifth stanza, the speaker entires, uh, enters into the poem hoping for uh, equal treatment along with all other objects in nature at least on the productive side. The poet offers humility that the wide uh, wind will assist him in achieving his quest to derive his dead thoughts over the universe. Ultimately, the poet is thankful for the inspiration he is able to draw from the nature's spirit, and he hopes that it will be also uh, the same spirit that carries his uh, words across the land when he also can be source of inspiration. Now, we try to summarize the poem. The speaker of the poem invokes the wild uh, west wind of autumn, which scatters the dead leaves and spread seeds so that they may be nurtured by the spring and asks that the wing, uh, wind air a destroyer and preserver. Uh, hear him, the speaker calls the wind the dirge of a dying air and describe how it is tired of violent storm and again implores it to hear him. The sp uh, speaker says that if he were a dead leaf that the wind could bear or a cloud it could carry, he plead with the wind to lift him as a wave, as a leaf, and as a cloud, for though he is like the wind at heart, untamable and proud. The speaker asks the wind to make me the, thy liar. He asks, make me thy liar to be his own spirit and to drive his thoughts across the un, uh, universe like uh, withered leaves. So quicker a new birth. He asks the wind by incantation of his verse to scatter his word among mankind to be trumpet of a prophecy. I repeat here, the trumpet of, of a prophecy is speaking both in regard to season and in regard to the effect upon mankind that he hopes his, his words to have. The speaker asks if winter comes can spring be far behind this is a well known line from uh, o to the west wind i repeat this if winter comes can spring be far behind now we come to the form of the poem each of the seven part of the ode to the west wind contains five stanzas four uh, three lines stanza and a two line couplet all metered in iambic pentameter. The rhyme scheme in each part follows a pattern known as treasure rhyme, the three-line rhyme scheme. The first and the third line rhyme and the middle line does not. Then the end sound of that middle line is employed as the rhyme for the first and the third line in the next stanza. The final couplet rhymes with middle line of the last three line stanza. Thus each of the seven part owed to the west wind follows this scheme. A, B, A, B, C, B, C, D, C, D, E, D, and E, E. I repeat the rhyme scheme of the ode A, B, A, B, C, B, C, D, C, 
डी ई डी ई ई दस द दिस इज द विस्पी फ्लूट ट्रेजरिमा ऑफ ओ टू द वेस्ट विंड फाइंड शेली टॉकिंग अ लॉन्ग थेमेटिक लीप बियोन द स्कोप ऑफ हाइम टू इंटेलेक्चुअल ब्यूटी एंड इनकॉर्पोरेटिंग हिज ओन आर्ट इन टू द मेडिटेशन ऑन ब्यूटी एंड नेचुरल वर्ल्ड शेली इन वोक्स द विंड मैजिकली डिस्क्राइबिंग इट्स पावर एंड इट्स रोल एज बोथ डिस्ट्रॉयर एंड प्रिजर्वर एंड आस्क द विंड टू स्वीप हिम आउट ऑफ द टॉपर एज अ वेव एज अ लीव एज अ क्लाउड इन द फिफ्थ सेक्शन द पोइट देन टेक्स अ रिमार्केबल टर्न Uh, transforming the wind into a metaphor for his own art the expressive capacity and drives dead thoughts like withered leaves over the universe to quicken a new birth that is the quicken or uh, the coming of the spring here the spring season is metaphor for a spring of human consciousness imagination liberty and mortality uh and all these things shelley hoped his art could help uh, to bring uh, bring about him in uh, human mind the thematic implication the significant uh, whereas the older generation of romantic poets viewed nature as source of truth and authentic experience and the younger generation largely viewed nature as a source of beauty and aesthetic experience in this poem shelley explicitly, uh, explicitly la- uh, links nature with art by finding natural metaphor with which uh, to express his ideas about the power import quality and ultimate effect of aesthetic expression thus it is a remarkable poem which treats the west wind as a force of death and decay and welcomes this because, uh, because it means rebirth will come soon thank you